Right, I'm going to go through and describe the MTS-407 controller. Let's uh, first look around at the back. Okay, so it has these different cards, the 407 conditioner. It's got an AC conditioner and a DC conditioner. AC is for the LVDT. The DC is for the load cell. It's got an empty panel. Uh, it's got a, a valve driver. It's got a communications card. That's what those Ethernet cables are for. And then to the right of that, uh, it's got the hydraulic interlock and so forth. HSM cable, e-stop power, and on the other side it's got a port for taking in digital signals and a uh, ground. And there's the power button. Over on the left it's got uh, these monitors for the AC conditioner and DC conditioner, the output 10 volts full scale. I'm going to turn this on and let it boot up. The 407 controller came out around 1995, 1996, and uh, can be purchased up until the maybe around 2000, 2005. It's uh, been obsoleted. Parts are no longer available through MTS, but you can still find some of these in labs and uh, on eBay. Here's the emergency stop. Here are the monitor ports for the conditioner. These are programmable. Here's the keyboard and keypad. And the, the knob that has to be enabled. So it's going through its boot up process. It's looking for the different slots. Hydraulic pressure low and high. Program run, hold, and stop. And hydraulics off. So I'm going to go through each of these menus. Now there are multiple menus and there's what's called the menu and the DVM button. The DVM is the digital voltmeter. As you press this button it'll swap between the current AC1 conditioner reading, which is the displacement, the LVDT, and the DC2 conditioner, which is the load cell. Here's the cycle count. There are some other features you can do by pressing enter. You can get different things to show up, peak valleys and so forth. scroll through that and if you want to go backwards you can hit alt and enter and it'll go backwards so by flipping this DVM and menu button you get back from the to that panel from the main menu so let's go into configuration I'm not going to describe all of these I'm just going to scroll through them to kind of document their values And here's a hydraulic configuration, it's HSM for hydraulic service manifold. Interlock configuration. Those things kind of depend on your lab, how you have them set up to your pump. Okay, pressing home gets you to the, the menu. Function generator is where you can change it from sine wave to different shapes. You can have an external signal using an input. Frequency set point and span. And a preset is where it will stop and pause the testing for you at a certain cycle count. Ramp generator it just uh, specifies the inputs for the ramp. Maybe more important is the controller. This is for the AC1 conditioner. Here's the PID gains. Those would change depending on your system. And if you want to change this to DC2 conditioner, then you hit enter. This also depends on whether you're in setup 1 or setup 2. Amplitude control, that's an optional feature. It's well worth it. Interlock status, just uh, the various interlock configurations. To clear these, you 
hit uh, alt reset or you can press enter to change the status AC and DC again AC is the LVDT DC is the load cell some of these are tripped just because it's on boot up monitor select this is where you can select the outputs for the B and C connections command signal air signal and so forth limit levels those would depend on your test minimum peak and maximum volley depend on whether or not you have amplitude control installed digital I.O. Okay, so this is where you can set a uh, synchronization signal for cycle counting I've used it very rarely AC1 conditioner. Okay, this is in setup one as our units, five inch full scale. It has the gain, the delta K, and the course zero. This would depend on your calibrations. Here's the excitation and phase and polarity. If we go back up to this and press enter, we'll go into setup uh, two and has a half inch maximum in this range. Likewise for the DC2 conditioner, again that's a load cell. This is for a, this is on setup two, it's a 20,000 pound capacity, full scale for setup two. It's a 50 kip machine, 50,000 pounds. There's my excitation polarity. And we can bring up setup one. There's the 50,000 pound scale. There's my gain. Again, that will depend on your particular load cell that you've got. DC shunt calibration check. Uh, you can do a shunt calibration if you have your calibration resistors. Two stage valve driver. A dither balance valve polarity monitor. Communications again only if you have a communications card that sets this up. In order to get it uh, hooked up with a serial cable, you need to change this to remote instead of local. Pod is a handheld device. Those are all the settings, all the menus on our 407.